but create counterplay and keep an eye on your king, which is very weak. And I don't see how to do it. F5 is like the most obvious move. I'm actually thinking about some kind of crazy A5 here, um, just because I... Wait, it's F5? Oh, it's losing the spot! And... Oh! My gosh! Rook takes E6? Drops another pawn! What That's does he the want? third pawn that Yan gives up! F takes G4, let's D5, Bishop E5, Rook E5. I don't see the idea there for Black. It's what just checkmate, right I'm, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm is confused. This, is this Yan on tilt? Rook E6, I don't understand it. F3 is his idea? Absolute so, disaster. Every single move, he's lost out on an advantage, given the chance to Ding to strike back. And did you see that? Ding actually looked at Yan. He looked at Yan there with this puzzled expression. Yan has blown this away. Rook e6 on the board. No way for Yan to come back. If f3 doesn't work, that is the third pawn that Yan has just given to Ding for free. What is this? This is supposed to be a world championship match. And this is why Ding Li Ren played Rook E2. That was a really subtle idea. It was just defending, of course, a pawn that was under attack. But he made it so Yan could not successfully play this active move F5. So I think that Ding Li Ren deserved a ton of credit. Yes, Yan Napamshi is absolutely collapsing at this stage of the World Championship Game 12. But Ding has created some problems for Yan. Yan's created problems for himself as well. And now the game is just over. There's no way to save this king. Did you see Yan there? 